Good day. Yesterday, yet again, a fuss blew up on Twitter about sexism and RPGs. The same two tired arguments that consistently come up every time. 140 characters is not a great deal of room in order to express oneself, and one can come across much more brusque than is strictly necessary. 140 characters is also the average number of casualties taken when attempting the Tomb of Horrors. This is no coincidence. I know that some Americans have trouble with issues such as irony, sarcasm, and any kind of comedy that goes beneath the immediate surface, as well as having issues with the English language, so I thought it might be best to create this little instructional and explanatory video. Point 1. I am for diversity in RPG illustration. I like both kinds of depiction, tits and arse. No, really. I'm for all sorts of illustrations, modest and immodest, active and static, every race, every gender, every whatever. If you argue for realistic in a depiction of a magical elf from the Kingdom of Fnar, I'm going to look at you askance, but a variety of body shapes, genders, races and so on is all good. But that would include cheesecake. These are fantasy games after all, and one person's set of fantasies shouldn't ride roughshod over everyone else's. Nor should the very things that have made the genre so successful be cast out in pursuit of a new market that may or may not exist. Point 2. I believe that RPG books and companies already bend over backwards far more than any other set of genre fiction or products to be accommodating to women and minorities. I don't particularly know why this is. It may be due to geeks being outcasts and wanting to be nice to everybody. It may, in the case of women, be that whole creepy best friend who fancies you thing trying to be nice. But it seems to be true. While you will find sexist depictions in a lot of RPG material, you'll also find people making a huge effort. And yet they still seem to get flack despite doing so good case in point being Paizo, who came under fire on that wretched hive of scum and villainy RPG net recently, the very cause of this whole recent set of discussions. This brings me on to point three. Point three. One of the means by which RPGs have sought to become accommodating is in the peculiar use of the exclusionary female pronoun in main body text, when you should be talking about someone of indeterminate gender. Like it or not, without a specific context, he for a is for a person of indeterminate gender. It's correct English. Same as you address a letter to an unknown person as Dear Sir, or you talk about mankind. English doesn't have a male-specific pronoun. It used to, if you go back to Old English, but he has been the catch-all since at least Chaucer's day. That is slowly changing. The colloquial tends to use they now, but using she doesn't solve the problem, the problem that never really existed in the first place. It perpetuates and creates the problem, since she does only refer to a single gender. Frankly, I think murdering the language in order to supposedly appeal to women is patronising and the linguistic equivalent of a pink DS. My brilliant old English teacher, Mr Kettle, died of an aneurysm. I begin to understand why when I get into this with people. Point 4. I have described role-playing and role-players as aspie and obsessive. Before you think that's an insult or something against disabled people, consider that I, too, am a gamer, an alpha geek, if you will, and therefore include myself in that description. I'm probably somewhere on that autism spectrum, somewhere. Yes, women can be just as obsessive, etc., but consider these kind of hobbies and behaviours are heavily biased towards the male in their membership. Always have been. And there's a common denominator between them. There's also a common denominator between which gender is most affected by Asperger's and similar syndromes. When I say I don't think RPGs will ever have mass appeal to women, that's why. It's simple demography. Could we create different kinds of games that do have greater appeal to women? Yes, we could, and we should, but they're not going to be traditional RPGs. And the ones that are successful that way aren't traditional RPGs, nor do they yet have mass appeal. The closest that anyone came was probably Vampire, and frankly, as Twilight shows, vampire fiction, even written by women, can be awful, sexist, and awfully sexist as well. Point 5. I have been accused of writing sexist and awful RPG books, with specific reference to the quintessential Temptress and the Slayer's Guide to Female Gamers. I don't know if any of you have ever worked freelance, but you work on the projects that you're given, in exchange for money. I would have loved to have written a much more serious treatise on getting women into gaming, or a better version of the book of erotic fantasy that wasn't quite so lame, but that's not what I was contracted to do. I have examined sex in a more mature way in my autopsy magazine. But, you do what you're paid to do. I'm used to hyperbolic overreaction by people who don't get the joke. Pentacle was once accused of being fetishized child rape. And frankly, whatever insult you're going to throw at me for anything else I've done, nothing is going to top that when it comes to ludicrous insults or not getting it. 
Once you explain a joke, it's said it's no longer funny. Still, let me try. The Slayer's Guide to Female Gamers is not a guide on how to kill women, nor is it an attack on women. The Slayer's Guide to Female Gamers is not really about women at all, but rather about male gamers' attitudes TOWARDS women. How stupid and puerile they often are. It plays up to the fact that most gaming groups are, have been, and ever will be sausage fests, and the horrible stereotype that male gamers are all socially inept wankers who wouldn't know what to do with a vagina if they got close to one. If anyone has a right to be outraged on their own behalf rather than acting as white knights in hopes of a sniff of some panties, it would be male gamers. Similarly, when it came to the quintessential temptress, what it's really about is attitudes and prevalent depictions in fantasy, making fun of them. Ladies, it's on your side. I also managed to sneak in a couple of more serious bits, particularly when talking about the old sore of the brothel in the fantasy city, which frankly makes great hook for low-level urban adventuring, and would happen. Nymphology, yet again, falls into the same sort of category. I would have really loved to have done a serious examination of the implications of magic upon sexuality in a fantasy setting, but the powers that be demanded comedy. Again, I managed to sneak a few more serious bits and pieces in amongst the humour, and again, you'll have to look beneath the surface to get the point of the joke. Hentacle? Well, there's no excuse for Hentacle, it was a drunken bet. The common denominator in all the above, besides me, all very successful products. Clearly some people are capable of looking past the surface and getting the joke, or they wouldn't buy them, and I wouldn't have been asked to write them. Excuse me for working at a deeper comedic level than American Pie. One last point to make. The level of hyperbole around my factually correct comments about the English language has now reached such levels of sheer stupidity as to include some people talking about a boycott of the companies and products I've written for. I have a two-point rebuttal. A. You've got to be fucking kidding me. B. This would pretty much leave you with palladium. The guys with the half-naked blind slave girls and the tentacle monster on their cover. For you Americans out there, that's irony. Thank you for your time. This is the sexist, ablest, monstrous bastard Grimm, signing off.